everybody, and welcome once again to Apostolic Children's Ministry Podcast. We are back. It's been a few weeks, it's more than back. a few, and I'm excited because Brother Danny is here. Hello, everybody. Brother Danny, welcome back to the podcast. It's been, um, it's been a little bit since you've, well, it's been a bit since we've had a podcast of any kind, but how yeah. long has it been since you've been on? I don't know, maybe about two months. Probably, maybe. probably. Yeah. Ooh, it's been a long time. <laughs> it has, and we got a little bit of catch-up to do. We're not going to go through all the different things that have happened. We might do a little snapshot of some of the key stuff, maybe touch on Easter and a few other things that we've done. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're going to change a little bit of the, the uh, format of the podcast a little bit. Okay. Because we listen to feedback. We really do. People think we don't, <laughs> but we really do. And part of the feedback is, yes, a lot of people are interested in the recap of our Sunday school. They, they want to hear about it. Some people don't, and Ooh. I get that. And so we're trying to reach a little bit of both. And so what we're going to do is at the beginning of each of these podcasts is kind of have a discussion question or a discussion topic and talk about that for a little bit. And at that point, if uh, you guys uh, don't want to hear about our Sunday school, I get it. Cool. You can tap out and, and uh, you're good to go. Um, but we will, in that recap part, kind of go through some of the ideas that we've used in our recent Sunday school, maybe the changes that we have uh, experienced. Um, Brother Danny is in a different class than me this this rotation, yes. and so he'll kind of discuss his schedule, I'll discuss ours, and uh, we'll kind of work our way through it. But I'm excited. Let's, too. let's do it. So let's talk about some of the recent events that's been happening around here. Okay. Um, we have already mentioned this, but since the first of the year, we've split into three classes. Our main class, rather, that was 5 to 11-year-old has split um, because it was starting to get unwieldy. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's redefine unwieldy <laughs> as chaotic. Uh, oh, no matter yes. how interesting you are, when you have 150 kids and many of them unchurched, meaning they don't have a history, a culture of being in a classroom, uh, it, it, it was just it was mayhem. Yeah. If we had perfect facilities, we would split it, you know, maybe... Equally by maybe 30s, you know, have groups of 30 here and there. But we, we just don't have those facilities. One day. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. That's right. One day we will, but we're not there yet. So I'm going to turn you up a little bit, Brother Danny. Okay. A little, just a touch quiet. Um, and so what we do have, though, are two rooms that accommodate around 20 apiece. And so we pulled out our 10 and 11-year-old girls and put them in one of those. Mm -hmm. 10 and 11-year-old boys put them in one of those. And the remainder are still in our former class. So... Same number of kids overall, but now we have 20, 20, and knocked it down from about 150 to about 100-ish, 90-ish. Yeah. It just depends on the day, quite yeah. frankly. Um, and so, so far, overall, I would say it's a success, although I do wish we could break it again because we're already, you know, feeling that, that uh, I, I, let's just say that, that edge of chaos it's not bad but like last week i was like man do we just we're approaching that oh, again no. where we need to break it <laughs> off again unfortunately we were out of space oh. we are tapped out so unless we go outside we've even talked mm. about uh, buying a tent setting up in the grass area permanently and going out there during summer because oh, wow. in the morning would be too bad yeah you yeah. know oh. when it's 100 degrees in the afternoon still the mornings are bearable we've talked about it maybe I don't know. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll do what we got to do because we are building a building starting. We were hoping this year, it looks like it's going to be the uh, 2025 that we're starting for the new sanctuary, which will free up the existing sanctuary for to more opportunities that. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but even that is at earliest two years out. I mean, that's that's if oh. everything goes absolutely perfect. And right. in two years, uh, you know, it's going to continue to grow and we are going to run out of room. So. We got to be creative, come up with ideas, and so we'll discuss how it, how the splits have gone. Brother Danny and I will mm -hmm. go into that in a minute. Um, let's talk about Easter for a minute. You good with that? Yeah. So this was the year of the drama. Ah, oh, I love it. Oh, okay, <laughs> a good drama, like play. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like an acting drama, <laughs> not, not as in drama. kids <laughs> acting like a dramatic person. <laughs> Uh, yeah, drama has has uh, <laughs> given itself new meaning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have our biannual, so every other year we have a, a big play for Easter, and it's a big deal, at least it around is. here. And, and it's super awesome, it, just the amount of people that come and the amount of effort that is put out when, you know, with cast and everything, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, so our 
cast was about 150 people this year. Um, so from the church, there's 150 people in the drama. And that's, that's also counting. Or about, a, I think it said 170 counting. M- minus like the. Well, counting costume people, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. counting sound, counting uh, auxiliary back, back backstage, stuff, yeah. all that stuff. So there's about 170 people in it total. 150 actually on stage yeah. acting. So uh, quite a, a, a big event. Um, we had that weekend. It was a really exciting weekend. We, on Friday, had our biggest service of, in the history of Inland Lighthouse. Yep. So like 1,077. I say that the biggest of a non uh, of an in the lighthouse only meaning like not a uh, what am I trying to say here like it's not where it's a, not a conference so it's not like we have an oh, yeah, SCZ yeah, yeah. conference right. here this is just in the lighthouse now there may be other people from other churches here we, we you know, we're not we're just saying it's not a multi church event so had our biggest service ever Friday night our second, second. our third biggest service okay, yes. Saturday and then Sunday was a good day, but not quite as big, which is interesting. Our Sunday mornings, at least until the last three or four years, have always been our biggest Easter service ever, by far. It's oh, wow. always been big. Oh, wow. Last few years, we've seen a trend where the weekend, Friday night and Saturday night, are much bigger than Sunday morning. In fact, we don't even have a Sunday night service because at that time, that's our fourth performance and We'd be, we're, we're uh, dead. We're yeah. tired. <laughs> let alone the the uh, the the audience was low enough a couple of years ago that we were just like you know we're just going to do the three and it's worked out really well. So, uh, great great weekend. I think there was twenty four people got the Holy Ghost over the weekend. I believe so. And what a, what a, just what a great day. Um, we're bringing that up on this Sunday school podcast because we had our Sunday school kids in there. Yes, yeah, so yeah that was morning. pretty awesome. They it was. I talked to some of them and they really enjoyed it. They was like, "Wow, that was that was really cool." Like, yeah. It was exciting and challenging. So we mentioned we have 170 people in the cast. I would say a good 90 plus percent of our Sunday school and mm-hmm. bus staff were in that. Yeah. Because like every church, <laughs> the people that are involved in one part of the church are typically involved <laughs> elsewhere. And the people that aren't involved in anything don't get involved in Easter right. <laughs> either. So there's some people that won't aren't involved in anything, and there's some people that are involved in everything. So we had our, our bus routes to go pick up kids, and all the people that were in the play were on the bus. On the we bus. had no yep. choice. We were driving, driving buses going to pick up people, knowing that if we're late... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we are gonna, we're gonna be in some serious trouble. We, you drove. Bus I didn't have day. to drive that day. Oh, actually, didn't? how'd you get out of that? Uh, because they had to put my. Oh, that's right. The, the beard on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I did have to drive, but our bus is close enough where it wasn't too much of a challenge. We're usually back about thirty minutes early anyway, and the service didn't start until like twenty after yeah. the hour. So we, we had plenty of time, and I think everybody made it just yeah, fine. I think so. It was interesting though. Because we had all of the Sunday school kids or, you know, the Sunday school kids that come with their parents just sat with their parents. But the kids that rode on the buses or the families that rode on the buses, we had to be responsible for them Mm -hmm. during the play. All of us were in the play. So we had no one to sit with them. Well, we're not going to leave them unattended. So, brother, I went through our entire church phone list. And I started texting the most random people. <laughs> I was wondering who we were going to get for that. <laughs> well, they're great people. Okay, All I mean is they have no connection to bus. They have no connection to Sunday school historically. And they stepped up and did a wonderful oh. job. Oh, and we had awesome. about 15 people agree to sit with them that uh, I don't think they've ever done anything like that. And they did a great oh. job. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I think there were some... <laughs> Some girls from one of the bus routes that uh, gave them a, a, a pretty tough time, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we won't go too deep yeah. into that. But <laughs> but it was overall pretty good. But neat weekend. But definitely a yeah. a, a, a tiring. Oh, oh, brother, was it ever! Tiring. So the last two weeks leading up to it, every single night that wasn't a church night, there was something. Yeah. So uh, Monday night was practice. Tuesday night was practice. Mm-hmm. Wednesday night was church. Mm-hmm. Thursday night was practice. either Bible quiz practice or drama practice, yeah. um, depending on the week. Right. Uh, the day of the week of the drama, it was Thursday night practice, Friday night actual drama, but the week before, every single night. So we, there was no rest for the weary. 
<sighs> but it was worth it all. Oh, it was, it was worth, worth it. it, it what a neat, neat weekend. Yeah. We have contacts from so many uh, of the visitors that came. Uh, it, it was just a wonderful weekend. So uh, I've been reading a book. Okay. Uh, actually, an audio book. But it had something that caught my attention. I just want to run this by you, and All we right. can just kind of discuss it. And if you're listening to this, you're going to think at first, what on earth <laughs> does this have to do with children's <laughs> ministry, okay? But there was a, a, uh, a book I was listening to, and one of the categories, one of the topics or chapter headings was something like, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Okay. Okay? And uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't startled by a massive revelation when they said, I was like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Well, they started off by saying that there was many studies done trying to figure out why people don't take care of themselves in the sense like it was even they go to a hospital Mm -hmm. because they have a particular condition. The doctor gives them medicine that will cure that specific thing. And then they refuse to take it Mm. and they continue to get sick. And many times Uh, get worse and sometimes even die because they don't follow through on doing the simple task of taking a pill. But those same people will have people or things they are responsible for, such as pets, that they take impeccable care of. Oh, yeah. Those same people that can't take a pill for themselves knowing that if they don't, they're going to get worse or possibly risk dying, but they will do anything for their cute little doggy woggy. You know, they'll give them... (laughs) pills and special food and whatever it takes. They'll stay up all night, you know, nursing this dog or whatever they have to do to keep them alive, but they won't even take a pill for themselves. And they were trying to think, why? What is, what are people's problem? Why can't they just? And so that caught my attention. Mm -hmm. And then they broke it down into stuff that, that makes a little more sense. But like as a parent, we take great care of our kids. Yes. Many times. I mean, there's some that are the exception. Right. But for the most part, we take great care of our kids and we're concerned with the things they eat. We're concerned that they get exercise. We're concerned that they go outside instead of just roasting their brain in front of a video game. We're concerned about all these things, right? Yeah. We're concerned that they read. We're concerned that they uh, get involved in things of the church. We're concerned that they fill in the blank, mm-hmm. right? All these different things, even that they eat healthy, right? But how much of that do we turn and do for ourselves? How much of that care that we... Yeah, that's put on those in our care do we do we put back on us and that's where it caught my attention because brother i am as guilty as sin yeah as far as i highly encourage mm-hmm. my kids to exercise and eat healthy and then i'll go and pound a mcdonald's <laughs> double at mcdonald's and not think twice about it yeah. but i get you know I, yeah. I i would be upset if that's all they ever ate but i would eat fast food every day if i had the money i mean just because it's quick and easy and i don't have to think about it right right, right. And here I am getting fatter every day, and, <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't bother me in the sense that it's like ah it's it's all right it's just me, yeah. But that's a problem. It is it because is. we are and 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 I'm going to wax a little spiritual here, brother. We are giving ourselves to the kingdom, right? We're right. investing ourselves in Sunday school, investing ourselves in the things of God, but we're not even taking care of our. I'm not talking about you, okay? This is all aimed at me. This is all. This is like a self-diagnosis mm-hmm. going on here. And I really was thinking, dude, I am out of shape. I don't eat right. And I know I don't. And I, I, am, I am slowly becoming less capable of doing the things that I should be doing. As in, you know, uh, I, sometimes when I do an outreach, I'm walking upstairs, huffing and puffing. Oh, 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 I wish these young kids would hit the upstairs, <laughs> upstairs, right? And I'm just like, dude, get yourself in shape and that wouldn't be a problem. You know, we invest in others, we take care of others, but and we don't take care of ourselves. That's kind of funny because maybe a week ago, a week and a half ago, I actually started thinking to myself that question, like, I'm not eating good and I need to eat better. So I actually have been for the past week and a half. I've actually been starting to Well, this is good timing. Then. I do. need you <laughs> to give me a pep talk. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that actually. And uh, I... I've been taking my multivitamins in the morning. Ooh, come on now. Um, I have um, even what are the probiotics that in the I don't morning. I don't even know what that is, but that sounds healthy. <laughs> it, 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 well, well, I don't know. It says it's supposed to help your stomach. I don't know. But I've been feeling better. And, you know, and it's giving me a little energy, more energy to do things that I... And it makes you want to do stuff. Yes. Instead of have to do stuff. Yes. And I'm like, oh, great. I have energy to do this. So, yeah, I, I get, I, I kind of see that. Yeah. So we're talking about health, but... 
how many other things are there, such as investing in yourself mm -hmm. for things that matter? I was reading another book, and it was uh, this is not a spiritual book, but it was talking about if you want to be financially successful or successful in general, they recommend investing mm -hmm. like money a percentage into your self improvement, such as if you you know earn a hundred thousand dollars, take which <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but <laughs> should you? <laughs> You take that 3% of that and invest it directly back into self-improvement for you, for you personally. Uh, that can be in any form, gym membership. It can be uh, books or, or going to uh, you know, seminars, <laughs> which we're going to talk about, Ooh. or you know, things that help you in your, your field, your career right. choice, or in this case, you know, things of God. You invest in things that will make you better. And they, theirs was kind of a little bit uh, self-ashamed in the sense that they're saying, you're going to get it back tenfold. Mm -hmm. You know, you invest 3% in five years, you're going to be earning that much more because of your, you're becoming a you know, more valuable person. Right. Now, for the things of God, how many, now I'm talking to everybody right now, including myself, but how many of our Sunday school teachers, including me, invest anything back into improving? I mean, we plan, we prepare, right. but many times we're just maintaining that level. The flow of yeah, it's going. It's working. Type. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm happy with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I can teach. I can do a puppet show. I can do action songs. I can do all these things. Right. I, I'm good. <clears throat> and we don't ever really stretch ourselves to try to improve. Right. How many times have we purposely went and bought a book on children's ministry? <clears throat> now, I have all those up there. These are all children's ministry books. Okay. I have not read all those books, and I have them. <coughs> I've read a lot, but... I didn't know you have them. And they're really good books. <coughs> and uh, I need to read all those and try to, you know, underline them and review them and go back through and get the bits and pieces out of it. And some of those, I'm telling you, brother, have absolutely changed the way I've teach. Like, there's one <coughs> um, by this uh, kid's magician. The guy's phenomenal. I have taken so many of his ideas and put them into stuff that into our Sunday school because mm -hmm. it's just great stuff. Mm. But I never would have had those if I hadn't bought those books right. and exposed myself to it. So ah. let's talk about the seminar. Yes. This next week in April 26th and 27th in Redlands, we have our SCC, which stands for Southern California Commission, a group of churches that our pastors have got together and decided to come up with uh, events that are bigger than a single church can handle uh, in this case, it is a children's ministry workshop, oh, seminar. It's going to be awesome. It is. And it's a two-day event of nothing but what we're talking about, investing in yourself. And I, yeah. what I'm most excited about is you have Gabe Baker from Chehalis, Washington. Oh, yeah. He flies every year because he wants to get better. The dude is one of the best children's ministers I know. He's one of the most organized people I know. The guy's phenomenal. I just like to be around him because he makes me better just by standing next to him. Seriously, yeah. he really yeah, does. I've... But he invests in the plane ticket, in the hotel, all of that just so he can come and be better. Chris Bradshaw from Union City, yes. Tennessee. The guy's a phenomenal children's minister. He's flying. Him and his wife are coming because they want to get better. Uh, Zach Leal, the, the guy that oh, plays yeah. the king at, at yeah. Kingdom Kids Conference every year. Him and his wife and uh, son are coming. Oh, wow. Uh, because they want to get better. That's a, that's a considerable investment. When right. you add up all of the money, we're talking probably at least a 1000 plus yes. per wow. person wow. to get them here uh, and do that. And they're willing to do it because they want to get better. And mm. I, I'm so inspired by that. I want I to invest in bringing that information home. So let's talk about that children's ministry seminar. Okay. As we go through, we'll briefly go through the schedule. By the way, that schedule is on SoCalCommission.com. If you click on children's ministry seminar, you'll see uh, the, the schedule there. It's also on Apostolic Sunday School, the schedule, and all the information is there. You can register. You can also do walk-up registration. It's $20 for early registration, 25 if you register at the conference. So it's a little bit less. That includes a meal on Saturday, which is crazy because if you go anywhere to eat, it's going to cost you minimum. I don't More. care. I don't care if you go to McDonald's; it's going to cost you ten to fifteen bucks yes. per person. Yes. So you're you're you know it's that, a free that. meal on Saturday, and, and then you, you have learn. two days of mm -hmm. of uh, learning. So let's go through this real quick. General session: We have Brother Tyler Hodge there. He is a children's ministry icon. Yes. He's going to be doing the songs first. Then we have our pastor. 
uh, Pastor Joel Booker Ooh. is going to be talking about why we should care about children's ministry. Why does In the Lighthouse invest? God only knows. He mentioned the other day in service, he said it was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. In children. Sunday school. That's what he said. When he did, I was like, oh, <gasps> are we really spending that? Oh. Now, he's, he's taking everything. I oh, mean, from okay. bus ministry to gas to insurance to maintenance on the buses to all of the different things. Okay? Oh, but still, There's, that's a ha, 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 ha. Boy, does that make you want to be careful with the way you're spending money? <sighs> but why, why is he, as a pastor, willing to invest that? And so he's going to be talking about that. Oh, I'm, I am I so excited. Wait. Yes. Then Brother Chris Bradshaw is going to be talking about praying with children in the altar. Ooh. And he is a monster praying with kids in the altar. Like, if you need someone to pray in the altar, I got two people that I, I like to say. Well, there's a bunch more. Mm-hmm. But Julian Estrada mm-hmm. can pray anybody through the altar, uh, the Holy <laughs> Ghost. And Chris Bradshaw can pray <laughs> anyone through the Holy Ghost. Those two people, you sick them on them, trust me, they are going <laughs> to. Either they're going to get the Holy Ghost or they don't want it. Like, they got, they'll run away. All right. Then we start our breakouts. We have Gabe Baker. Uh, talking about designing a theme, themed Sunday school. And if you've ever been to their Sunday school, you know this man is, this is, this is him in a nutshell. I want to go so bad up there. It's so cool. (laughs) It's so cool. They are every quarter they have a different theme and they go all out on decoration. They had a pirate ship and, you know, uh, last time we were there, year before that was, uh, I don't remember what it was before. I know it's space once, and yes. I don't remember. I'm getting a little lost. But anyway, they do such a fabulous job. Um, at the same time, we have Liz Machuca doing effective teaching for toddlers. And let me just tell you, I was in a training session with Liz Machuca uh-huh. for our local church. She was phenomenal. I, and it sounds like all of these, I'm just over the top. Like, everything. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, she was as good as, as anybody I've heard talking about toddlers. She was so oh, wow. good. Uh, then bro- Brother James Pelletier. I am so excited he's coming from Oklahoma City. You've mm-hmm. not met him yet. I've never met him. He's from uh, Brother Rodney McDonald's Church in Oklahoma City. We met him through WhatsApp or- originally through our chat. And I've been then, in that church. Have you? Yes. Well, the guy I invited people to that church. Did you really? Yes. That <laughs> small world. Yeah. Okay. Well, you get, you'll, you'll get to meet him this oh, cool. uh, next weekend. Um, he is a Sunday school junkie, but he Ooh. is so good at it. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm so excited. He's going to be there. The first session, he's, he, he's teaching like six sessions, poor guy, or five. I mean, he's getting hammered. The ad ministry, talking about administration for children's ministry. Tyler Hodge, talking about classroom management. Gabe Baker, talent is overrated. How to just do it. I'm excited about that. I want all of our people in there. You don't have to be talented right. to be really good at Sunday school. I am an example of that. James Pelletier, building routes while avoiding ruts. Come on mm. now, in children's ministry routines, then we're going to have a Sunday sc- or excuse me a children's church service mm-hmm. uh, at seven p.m. on Friday night. So if you are anywhere in and this area, can come, right? Oh, we want yeah, we want them okay. all to come. But the people that are in the workshop mm-hmm. are the ones doing the service. So we're going to get together and practice ahead of time and okay. let all of those that want to be involved as involved as they want to be from action songs to teaching to skits and puppet shows and all that uh tyler hodge oh this next one's a a, a, an interesting one it's 50 minutes or 12 minutes each of four different people or five different people talking about how to keep things exciting why boring isn't okay in children's ministry tyler hodge james Mm -hmm. pelletier gabe baker and chris bradshaw i guess it is four four I can't add. Yeah, four times 12 is 48. That means two minutes or extra. What are they going to do with all that extra time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, there will not be a second of extra time. Uh, we're not going to go through all this, but, man, Chris Bradshaw is talking about uh, Children's Church. Julian Estrada thinks everyone should know about uh, bus ministry. James Pelletier thinking outside the arc. Biblical ex- uh, inspiration from unconventional places. Tyler Hodge, best of Kidman songs. If you've never been to that one. Oh, yes. That's a great I'm just one. telling you, circle it. Mm-hmm. If you've one. never been, you have to go. Uh, and bring your tennis shoes. <laughs> you will, and your inhaler. And water, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, James Pelletier, the secret sauce to being a real rigatoni in a world of impastas. If that doesn't tell you the kind of guy he is, <laughs> right. I, that makes me excited. <laughs> Fundamentals of self development for children's ministry. Ray Munoz, starting a bus ministry from scratch, slash effective outreach. 
Uh, then we're do. Uh, I'm doing one on object lessons. Tyler Hodge on dealing with modern day issues in children's ministry, things that can't be taboo. That one he did several years ago, and it was so, so. I remember good. that. Yeah, so I remember good. that. Caleb Dillon, I'm excited he's doing this one. Teaching oh. for teens, effective teaching for teens. So I was going to have him at the same time as effective teaching for toddlers, but he just couldn't make it on that oh. that time slot. So he's going to be on Saturday. Brother Tell, Bell, Pelletier, again, experience teaches how to be a successful failure. Wow. Cool. Come on now. Is that good or what? <laughs> Gabe Baker, the checklist, how to get stuff done. That one's going to be epic, that one's too. That be good. Julian Estrada, taking your best ministry to the next level. You already have one. Now how to get, take it to the next one. Then we're going to have a Q&A with all those different speakers. And then we are done. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Oh, and this year we're live streaming. I have a bunch of people every year that ask us, are you going to live stream? I always say no. In fact, I've already told people no by email several mm. times. And then we thought, yes, we can do this. Yes, we can. So we are going to have it on the Apostolic Sunday School YouTube channel. We'll have all three sessions uh, going uh, all day long. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting. Phone. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll make those links readily available. I'll send out an email to that and letting everybody know how to find it. But that'll Ooh. be exciting. Yes. So, that's how you can invest in yourself. That's One how of the you ways. can yes. treat yourself better than a pet. <laughs> Don't bring your pet to the seminar, bring yourself. <laughs> now, I do, I do think. That there is a little bit, and, and this is not false humility or, or false modesty with some people, but it feels like sometimes, and I'm not talking about eating healthy, but mm-hmm. if you think too much about yourself, that, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, what's the word? You, when you think too highly of yourself, you think uh, you're better than everybody. You're arrogant, right? Arrogant, you're, conceited. Yeah. Arrogant. You're arrogant, conceited. And I guess it could lead to that if you let it go overboard. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about just treating yourself like, I'm going to go back to the title, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. As if God put someone in your care and said, I want you to take care of this person. If God told me, I want you to take care of this person, I would take pretty good care of them. Whatever it took. If that's an elder, if that's a, a, a child, I'm going to take very good care of them. But hasn't he done that with us? Hasn't he put me in my care and say, okay, here's your body. Take care of it. Here's your, your, your mentality. Take care of it. Here's your brain. Take care of it. Here's your spiritual life. Take care of it. Yeah. And many times we, well, it's just me. Just don't. Yeah. So I'm talking to myself as much or more than anybody else, but we really do need to take care of ourselves, invest in ourselves so we can become even better and do the things that God wants us to do. And and that kind of, I mean, sorry, I didn't. Kind of go back to your thing. Um, Just think about it. Like the world invests 12 plus years in secular education to better themselves, to get, you know, teachers or whatever they are. And as Sunday school teachers, we only get a small amount of time with these kids. You know, how much more should we really invest in ourselves to pour ourselves into them? You know, and, and teach them. I don't know. It's just I always think that in my head. Like, no, absolutely. I should. I, I should think do more. I saw a visual of that. That was so good. It was a. Uh, I think it was, you know, Brother Jason Bohannon. I think it was his mm-hmm. mother. This is many, many years ago at youth convention. They used to have a little Sunday school training deal mm-hmm. in a little side room at youth convention of all places, and she had a rope. It was this big old long rope. I don't remember how long it was. But she started pulling this rope, and she said, all of this is the time that kids spend away from you, away from church, with their friends, with their unsaved family, Mm. with their school, with their secular teaching. And she keeps pulling this rope. This rope just seems to go on forever. And then the last little few inches, I'm telling you, it was like such a tiny percentage. She said, this is the hour you have with them or the two hours you have with them. And it was like four inches compared to 20 feet. And I I don't know, I'm kind of making up those numbers, but it was like that. And she said, this is all the time you have. You better make the most of it. Right. We have an hour. I mean, if we're picking up the kids and we have the bus ride, you know, we might have them for longer than that. Say we pick them up at at 9 o'clock and we drop them off at 11. That's still only two hours. We drop them off at 12. That's three hours out of their, 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 you know, 24 hours a day times seven. Right. That's not very much time. Not very much time. So we, like you said, we have to make the most of it. Yep. And that's always in the back of my mind. Yep. I try. Yeah, as it should be for all of us. 
All right. Well, let's go. Uh, so this is where you can turn us off if you don't want to hear about <laughs> our recap for our classes, because we are going to touch on that, because there are some people that enjoy it. Um, not just enjoy it. But the, the idea is is twofold. I want to recap <laughs> why we recap. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our, our different classes now, and we have a schedule, and we go through that schedule for a reason, because some people want to know, how do other people have Sunday school? How do they come up with their ideas? How do they build a lesson? And that's kind of what we're trying to express every week. And this is also for a little bit of, of historical, uh, uh, for, for, for saving it per, to perpetuity, where I can go back in a year mm. and say, have we grown? Mm. Are we better? Yeah. Or are we the same people that we were two years ago? If I go listen to the podcast, I'm like, oh, wow, we were better back then than we are now. <laughs> that would stink. Yeah. That would really be embarrassing. So I'm hoping it doesn't ever get there. And I want to be improving all the time. So let's go through. Why don't we go through your class? Okay. You are the ten eleven boys class. Yes. And uh, we are doing. It was a one month rotation, where all the teachers that wanted to be uh, part of both classes, because it's really hard separating from that five to eleven class that we've been all been a part of for so many years, right. and saying I'm going to forever be in the ten to eleven boys class and never see that other class again. So many of us were like, Hey, I want both. So we want to float back and forth between the two. So we were doing a four-week rotation where you'd be four weeks in one class and four weeks in the other back and forth, except that there's always exceptions like Easter, like Holy Ghost Rally, like Family Day, like yeah. the different things that happen where we don't have Sunday school or not Sunday school as normal. And so it ended up being two weeks two, yeah. or maybe three weeks. And so we couldn't get into a rhythm. You, know, you couldn't get to know the kids really. You couldn't get to develop any sort of... Uh, consistency and so we expanded that to now two months so now like it was all of april all of may and so you guys are in there and uh your class is brother keith and seth are the ones that are permanently in there they're not floating uh brother ruben lamelli yourself bob lee and i think that's it that's it yeah that's it so you guys are the ones in there so what happened last week well we did um the topic was the fear of god Yep. And, um, and and that topic is shared between classes because we did the same topic in our class. Okay. So we, what we did was regular intro rules, nothing special there. Um, we also did the ap- apostolic chant. Uh, the games, we came outside and we played um, like basketball to see who can, I don't know what it's called, where they... Real like, quick, the, some of the stuff we're skating over, the intro rules, we're saying as normal, apostolic chant as normal. If you're just listening to this for the first time and have no idea what as normal is, no, 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 it's fine. E- email us at info at apostolic and we'll be happy to send you all that info. We just don't want to regurgitate it every podcast for our regular listeners that would be like yawning their way through it and just skip, <laughs> skip, skip, skip. We don't want to do that to them. So that's why when we say as normal, we're getting to the chase. So, okay. all right. So you went outside and, and played a game? Yeah. Um, where they kind of, whoever shoots first and makes the basket first, then they get to stay and the other one has to leave or step out. Um, and then we did memory verse. Uh, oh, the action song. On that, on that game, this is interesting because you have a smaller class. Yes. 15, 20 guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have some opportunities that we don't have in our class. Right. There is no way I'm taking 90 kids outside and back inside. That process alone would take 30 minutes. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just trying to settle them down, get them all out the door, get them all back in. Then they can't find their seat, and then they can't find their stuff. And right. It's chaos. But with 15 older, a little bit older boys, 10 to 11-year-olds, they're a little more mature. They can handle that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I really enjoyed when I was in that class is that, hey, we can do some neat stuff. And, and it's awesome because they're so flexible and they, for the most part, they, you know, you, hey, come on, it's time to go in. All right, let's go in. And they could walk right Isn't in. Isn't that interesting? Now, when, when they were with the younger ones, they were the problem causers. Mm-hmm. They were the ones that were riling up all the other kids and being the knuckleheads. But now that they're in their own group, yeah. they're pretty good chill. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm and now our you. nine-year-olds are the knuckleheads. <laughs> Seriously, now oh, our yeah, older yeah. nine-year-olds are the ones doing the same thing <laughs> the 11-year-olds used to do. Ay, oh, yeah. ay, ay. I'm sorry. I am not no, going to no, keep interrupting. Okay. I'm really not. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was really fun. Um, we got to play the game, the basketball game, for a little bit, and then um, right after I had action songs, um, we did Father Abraham outside with the because we, we're talking about Abraham and Isaac. Ex- yes, yeah. The story that the last one was based on is the fear of the Lord. Abraham and Isaac. Mm-hmm. Abraham was about to kill Isaac, and he, you know, God or the angel grabbed his hand and said, "Now I know you fear me." Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's where that was based on. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. And so uh, we did that song. We have a little Bluetooth speaker that we play. 
out. Uh, we play the songs on. Um, and then the memory verse, Brother Lee did that, and that's uh, John 3, 5. And the kids, he had them come up and, uh, well, he quoted the verse, then he had them come up, and he gave them like a bag of chips. So they all quoted it, and they all got a bag of chips. Um, and you know what's funny is that we actually let them eat it in there. I, I don't know why. Anyway, sorry, Brother Lee, I didn't mean to tell you. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> Brother Ruben, he did the first lesson, which was really cool. He had um, he was talking about the fear of the Lord in not being afraid, like scared, but being um, respectful, reverent of, of him. And so he had me and Brother Lee come up there, and he was like, I was the bad guy that um, was supposed to be sinning and did all this and brother lee was the good person that feared god and 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 all this stuff happened to him so the good things happened to him and the bad things happened to me um prayer request we did that um same thing kids Uh, we just asked them if they needed any prayer um the good behavior game or the good behavior reward i had that and all i did for that was just to watch them um there was three that really behaved well and so i just gave them 10 extra sunday school dollars each so they enjoyed that um, the final lesson was Brother Lee. Um, I honestly can't remember what he talked about. But. Probably the fear of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the idea of the good behavior game or good behavior reward is that it's just a, a carrot on a stick. Yes. All day long that you can keep reminding them, hey, the most well-behaved is going to win something. Maybe they don't know what it is. Maybe they do. Or maybe you tell them that every teacher is going to pick somebody or however you do it. Just a way to keep them on their toes. And then after every piece every segment you can remind them of that or you can give something at the end of every piece you yeah. know maybe at the end of every song or something um <clears throat> just an interesting uh way to to maintain order so in the super class and the, the 10, 10 to 11 girls i don't have anyone from here but they did something very similar yes they did but you know their own version <clears throat> so in the five to nine year olds we started off in that class we had a pre-class activity Bree hinkley did that i was on the bus so i don't know what they did um, Kim Ramos did the good behavior incentive. She had each teacher with a little piece of paper, and we wrote down a name, mm-hmm. and then at the end, we would announce those. Hmm. Uh, the creative intro, the story that connects everything, the weekly social media challenge was Bree. And the creative intro is just a, Brother Gabe Baker calls it a dynamic opening in their Sunday school. We call it creative intro, same thing. You can say potato, we say patata, <laughs> but it's the same thing. It's something that comes in with a bang, catches the kids' attention, and uh, starts the class off right. <clears throat> um, and then the story that connects everything <coughs> is taking all the different pieces, mm-hmm. all the different segments, all the different chunks that every teacher is doing and turning them into one cohesive story that makes sense rather than it sounding like eight different people who prepared eight different things coming up and doing eight. You know, It, it just kind of blends them all into a smooth story. At least that's, the, that's when it works perfectly. Mm-hmm. For the most part, it works pretty well. Um, in this case, Bree's story that connected everything was she kept trying to scare everybody because she's talking about the fear of the Lord, right? So the first time she'd come out and she like turned all the lights off and started going, woo, and we're like, what are you? <laughs> Flip the lights back on. What are you doing? She goes, I'm trying to scare you guys. Are you scared? Do you feel the fear of the Lord? We're like, Bree, what are you doing? Uh, I can and see so it. she finally you know, leaves and then... Uh, Brother Larry's coming on and she turns on the sound of like a, uh, a thunderstorm and waves crashing. And she's like, oh, can you feel it? This, the ship's about to sink. Can you feel it? And Larry's looking at her like, what are you doing? <laughs> she's like, oh, you don't have a uh, ship syncophobia? <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not on a ship. Oh, Why would I? I? She goes, oh, <sighs> I'll try something else next time. So uh, between every piece, she keeps trying to scare all the teachers with it got wilder and more nutty all the time. That's what it yeah. was. Okay. Yeah, she's crazy. But it was great. It was great. Um, then she did a weekly social media challenge, which is where uh, from Monday to Saturday, the kids have to do something. I think this one was look up a verse mm-hmm. about uh, a verse that will help you deal with jealousy or envy. Ooh. Because that's what we're talking about. Next week. This week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this week. Yeah. Um, then Elena came up and did the rules, the birthday, super squire of the week, super squire, super student. They're all the same thing. I think the, the girls are now doing pirates, and so they're doing super yes, sailor. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that we pick a child from the week before <clears throat> that we can uh, bring up in front of the whole class and make them feel like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. This person 
acted really well behaved, but we try to make it not be the same cute little petite girl that does everything perfect and sits there in her perfect little mm -hmm. uh, spot with her perfect little dress and never does anything wrong. We kind of want it to be a kid that may not, maybe not always gets it right, but the week before they did really good. Right. You know, they had a good week, and we want to reward that and call them up and say, hey, last week, man, this young man, they came up and they prayed and they did a great job. They didn't talk to their friends. They, they really concentrated on class, and we'd like to call up, and maybe it's someone that kind of surprises everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, whoa, I could, I could win it. The idea is that a kid can say, that could be me. Yeah. But if it's that same precious little girl, they're like, I could never be that good. You know, if it's the her every time winning it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we try to definitely spread the spread the joy on that. Yes. Um, then we have the creative memory verse. Larry did that. And, oh, man, he made a puzzle. So he printed out John 3, 5, chopped it up, and then had three teams of kids mm -hmm. and then a teacher, which the kids elected me, and we had to tape the puzzle together, John 3, 5, which sounds like no big deal, except he cut up the pieces tiny. <laughs> It oh, was wow. hard, and I know the verse really well. And I'm telling you, I it took me probably, well, he had seven minutes for the thing, and we went long. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> it, it took forever. At the end, of it, he's like, "Oh, <laughs> I guess I should cut him bigger next time." I'm like, please, because I'm not that smart. <clears throat> but then we went went over the memory verse that we put together to make sure that we knew it. Yeah. Uh, we do that same memory verse four weeks in a row. And then we had Greg do an action song. Greg? Yeah, but I don't remember what he did. Oh. It was a good one, whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. Uh, and then Kim Ramos did the offering and prayer request. <coughs> uh, Logan did the puppet show. <laughs> oh, my word. He was such a dork. So he gets, <laughs> he has this, uh, Logan's my son, by the way. That's why I'm calling him a dork. He had this puppet who's kind of this, this orange puppet he's like a blue a black light puppet but he comes out and he's talking to the the princess and uh he said i'm practicing being scared and so he, goes, ah! and he just starts screaming and she's like what are you doing he goes well I, I i'm practicing how did i do she's like what is your problem he goes well i'm practicing being scared of the lord <laughs> you know and she's trying to explain to him you have this so backwards we're talking about the fear the respect the awe of the lord when you walk into the house of god you should not be scared and want to hide under a bench you should be just in awe and say jesus thank you for letting me be here not doing something silly like some kids might be tempted to draw on the walls or do something mm -hmm. crazy because they have no respect for the house of god but we we need to have a fear of god a respect and awe of god and so <clears throat> After a suitable amount of time, the puppet got it and quit being scared. <laughs> <clears throat> then Greg did a mini object lesson. He used the one. <clears throat> I've got a major oh. toad crawling wow. in my throat. Uh, it's on Apostolic Sunday School. It's the, the ketchup packet in the bottle. Uh, we call it mm. obedience in a bottle. You squeeze the bottle and it shrinks, or not shrinks, it, it sinks mm. down or rises up, depending on how hard you squeeze it. Right. So he talked about obedience and listening to God when he prompts you. And oh. So it was very good. We did the apostolic chant, myself and Isaac Medina. And basically, I just said that my side of the room is obviously much louder than his, obviously. But we had to put it to a test with our, our uh, what's that meter? Uh, my brain just turned off. Mine too. The, the one that will tell one. you how loud stuff is. Yes, yes. I know. Decibel meter. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so we have, we have an actual decibel meter we bought on Amazon. And uh, the the my side was louder by 0. 0.5. <laughs> oh. It was not much. Oh, wow. They were like 104.5, and we were 105 even. So <laughs> not sure how that happened. Then we did the final lesson, the Bible story. Oh, I missed it a little bit because my final lesson was based on something that I did right after the song. So right after Greg did the song, mm -hmm. I, I went out in front of the kids. I said, guys, I need to know who really likes me. And you had a couple of kids, you know, a few raised their hand. And I said, no, no, really likes me. Like, like I don't have to beg you to do something. I could just kind of make mention it and you'd be happy to do it because you're my friend. Or, you know, you, mm -hmm. you like me. You're, you think I'm cool. And so more kids raised their hand. And I said, oh, you also had to have participated in the song. So you have to like me and participate in the song. And so hands went up. I said, okay. And I'm going to give one of you guys this. And I had bought a really cool prize on Amazon. It was like a... I don't know how to describe it. It's like a dry erase board, but mm -hmm. it's backlit, and it makes the writing glow. Ooh. It's really cool. Okay. 
Anyway, so I, so I held it up and I said, I'm going to give this away to somebody. Who wants this? So they raised their hand. I said, okay, so here's the qualification. You have to like me. You have to listen to me when I ask you to do something. You have to have participated in the song and you have to really, 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 really want this item. Mm-hmm. So I had a few people, you know, a lot of people raising their hand because they saw it and they thought it was cool. So a lot of kids that didn't meet the other criteria <laughs> but just wanted it, they raised their hand. So I picked the, I picked the young man. He came up and I said, this is yours. And I gave it to him. And he's like, Thank you. That's it. I said, yeah. So he walked back. Oh, he said, oh, oh, before you go, I do need to keep that because I don't want it to break at your seat. We wouldn't want anybody to mess with it. Why don't I just keep it here until the end of class? He said, okay, cool. So I left it right where everybody could see it mm-hmm. all day long. So now it's the final lesson. And I, I said, you know what? We're about at the end. I'm going to call this young man back up. I said, why don't you come up here? And he, he did. I said, you're my friend? He goes, yeah. I said, cool. You participated all day? He goes, yeah. I said, do you really want this? Yeah. I said, okay, you can have it. So I gave it to him. And he tucks it under his arm. He's walking back to his seat. I said, oh, one last thing. Mm-hmm. I know you waited a little bit to get this, but I need you to do one more thing. And I handed him a hammer. I said, I want you to smash it to pieces. And he looked at me like I had lost my mind. <laughs> I said, I'm not joking. I want you to lay it on this table. And I want you to smash it with this hammer. I handed him a hammer. I said, I want you to just destroy it. And he looks at me and he's like, really? Uh-uh. And so he kind of tentatively like raised it and it was kind of, he didn't really know if he was really supposed to or not. Right. I get it. That was the whole point. Well, right before he actually brought it down, I grabbed it. I said, you said you were my friend. You said you'd do anything I asked you to do. You said it, but now I know because you were willing to actually destroy this mm-hmm. thing. And so I then told the story of Abraham and Isaac, how Abraham had waited forever for a son. He finally got a son given to him. God gives him this precious gift that means more than anything. He waited 25 years for it, and then God said, oh, I'm glad you finally have it. Now I want you to destroy it. <clears throat> and so we likened what just happened with that boy and his precious gift to Abraham and Isaac. Oh, and wow. God said, now I know. Before, you can say all you want that you fear God. You can say all you want that you love God. But until it's put to a test, right. you don't really know. And so God said, now I know. And so I told him, I said, you said you're my friend. I believed you. But now I know, mm. and everybody else knows, because you'll listen to me no matter what. So anyway, he didn't break his deal, and I got <laughs> it back to him. Oh, that's cool. And the, my whole time, I was like trying my best to make sure I caught his hand in case he was one of those lunatics that was just going to smash, smash it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I was trying. It didn't turn out that way, but it was all right. Then we had an altar call. <clears throat> some prayed, some didn't. But this mm-hmm. was really neat. At the end of class, my wife, she comes up she goes there is a parent freaking out looking for their kid yeah or their kids two two boys this is their first time here they've never been to church before and they cannot find their kid they're coming to pick them up that's my worst fear i mean that's like a horrible nightmare a parent cannot find their child and so we start looking everywhere guess where we found the kids where at the altar those two kids were crying their eyes out at the altar for like 15 minutes after oh, class. Wow. Brother Ruben Lamelli was praying with them, and that's where their parents found him. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they were praying so long that their parents couldn't find him. What a great place to find mm. your kids. <clears throat> and, yeah, their parents were just blown away. <laughs> and these were not kids accustomed to church, at least visually. I don't know the whole history. But let me just say they didn't appear to be apostolic just by looks. Mm. <clears throat> It was really cool. It was so cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's what it's about. Yep. So anyway, what a great day. Uh, Bus ministry picked up 80-something this time. Um, We're definitely in a little bit of a a dip in attendance a Mm. little bit. I don't really know what to attribute that to, but unfortunately, if you've done bus ministry for any length of time, you know there's highs and there's there's dips. And so sometimes you have a lot coming and sometimes... You know, regulars stop coming and you don't know why. So you got to keep pushing on outreach and try to get more. So that's just part of the process. Yep. You don't give up because it's hard. <laughs> you try harder because it's hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we are about 50 minutes in. Uh, do you have anything else, Brother Danny? Mm, no. Okay. Well, we've covered some ground, but I do want to reiterate one more time. Children's Ministry Conference coming up April 26th and 27th at Redlands. Go to SoCalCommission.com. You can register there. Apostolic Sunday School at the very top. You'll see a few different entries. One of them is the seminar. Click there. You can hit register and come to the event. Uh, it's $20 per person. If you register ahead of time, 25 at the door. Includes a meal. The schedule's all there. 
We'd love to have you. Can't wait to see you guys in person. It's going to be a great, great, don't great time. Don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. All right. Well, if you have any questions or anything you want us to talk about next time, send us an email to info at apostolicsundayschool.com. And I want to say this. I usually try to say this at the beginning, but we do not claim to be experts on this thing. Mm-mm, not one bit. But we love it. Yes. We are yes, passionate yes, yes. about it, and we're always trying to get better. Um, and this, this, I'm sorry to drag out this ending like this, but Brother Gabe Baker put out a podcast. Did you... Uh, do you ever listen to his podcast? I I'm not putting know. you on the spot, but it's no, really I don't good. even know you had one. Kidman uh, backstage, okay. really good. Uh, but he put out one a few weeks ago called the Imposter Syndrome. Brother, it is so good. I'm gonna so the Imposter that. Syndrome is someone that does something, but they really don't think they're qualified. No matter how, what level of success they have at it, they always just think at the back of their mind that if people found out who I really was, mm-hmm. or that I'm not as good as they think I am, then I would be found out and I'd be kicked out. Kind of like that's the, that's the, mm. it's underlying. Maybe they've not even verbalized it that way, but it's how, that's how they feel. And I thought that was so good because brother Danny, I don't care how long I've done this thing. There's so many times I'm thinking if people listen to this podcast new and they came to our class sometimes when it's chaos, they'd <laughs> yeah. be like, Oh really? You're going to do a podcast and then your class is chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for telling us how to do it. Uh-huh. And I, I really do think that I'm like, man, you know what? Forget this. We're doing the best we can. Mm-hmm. If there's something that needs tweaked, we're not too proud to say, wow, that's broke. <laughs> we need to fix it. Yeah. Uh, and so I do want to shake us all out of that, uh, that imposter syndrome of, yes, we do belong here. Mm. We're doing what God put us here to do. Yep. And if someone more qualified was here, Brother Danny, I would step gladly aside and say, take their place. Pastor, if you want them here, I have no problem with that. But until then... Hey, it's on us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. We got to make this thing happen. All right, guys. Love you. Thank you so much. We will see y'all next time, and hopefully we'll see you Bye. April 26th and 27th. Woo. God bless. Bye.